Canada's first mosque is a woman's story. It was the vision of women. This is remarkable. I mean, it's the stuff we think of that would happen in a city like Toronto or Montreal or New York. It happened in Edmonton. A bunch of people from a little village in Lebanon. It's important for people to understand the story of the mosque. It's important for people to understand the story of temples and synagogues and churches and see that they all came from the same place, an intention to worship, an intention to build community. The story of the Al Rashid Mosque is a very interesting story. If you can imagine uh, this group of people coming into Canada, you would have the Christian uh, Arab and the Muslim Arab. The Christian Arabs tended to stay behind in Eastern Canada because they had their churches that they could go to. The Muslims, though, didn't have any religious organization or building that they could go to. People used to pray all over, but then they would hire a building, a hall, um, somebody where a big house will Use, give their basement, etc. But a building in the name of mosque did not exist. Muslim people were immigrants like everyone else, like all of the other ethnic groups who came, all of the other religious groups. They were immigrants. They came with nothing. And they came to build a life in this country and to give back to the country, not just to take, but to come and build and grow their families and their lives and their businesses. My grandmother was Hilwi Hamden. She was an amazing woman who came to Canada as a teenager, really. Lived in Fort Chippewan for many years, had children, eventually moved to Edmonton. She was very active in the Edmonton community, not just the mosque. She was a member of the Ladies Liberal Society. She was a member of the Eastern Star and they formed the Red Crescent during the war to support the Red Cross in raising funds for the, the war effort. So she was very active in the, in the broader sense of the community. She just believed in doing the right thing. And she believed in people of all religions, from all walks of life. She really had an open heart. And she did believe in women. And she did believe that women should have a voice. She said, well, if we can build a community building, why can't we build a mosque? We can build a place of worship. And they said, oh, that would be very difficult. She said, well, I think we can do it. So they made an appointment with Mayor Fry, was the mayor at the time, and they, were, and they said, well, come with us. And she said, well, I don't think that I should go with you. I'm, you know, I'm a woman and I don't speak great English. And they said, no, no, come with us. So she did, she went with them and sure enough, she was able to speak up and Mayor Fry gave them, if they can raise the money to build the mosque, he would give them the land. At that time in 1938, the city of Edmonton had a special program for religious groups. So the city of Edmonton uh, gave land to the Muslim community for $550. My grandmother was very involved as well. She was very much involved also on the, on the fundraising side, cooking the meals, uh, and uh, very much supporting the whole initiative. But basically, I would say all the, all the women and all the men, it had to be a group effort. The first little mosque was supported by the Jewish community, the Christian community, both Protestants and Catholics, obviously the Muslim community, and the Christian Lebanese community. We had a uh, Ukrainian contractor who uh, helped to build this mosque. The Muslims at the time uh, said, we only have so much money to build the mosque. Let's make it as simple as possible. We will take your ideas from the Ukrainian side. We will use our ideas from uh, our homeland and put the ideas together. 
and that's how the domes come into being. You know, the shape of the building is more a square type of uh, building, and uh, the building only took 10 weeks to build. Everybody went to that little mosque. The entire community, regardless of your nationality, regardless of the sect that you belong to, um, everybody prayed at that mosque. It was a space that in, uh, in a number of respects was um, protected and nurtured by women. Uh, I mean, the women annually held these huge suppers. Uh, five, six hundred people would come and eat at these suppers, all home cooked meal, food, all prepared in the basement of the mosque. Um, people would like literally line up to like get in and have their meal and that those that fundraising really kept the mosque going from year to year in, in many respects so the women were instrumental in the sort of the financial stability of the mosque and then in 1946 the city of Edmonton and the Edmonton Public School Board wanted to expand a school, Victoria Composite High School. So the school in the city of Edmonton uh, came to the uh, Muslim community and said, would you be willing to move the mosque? And uh, the Muslim community said, uh, yes, we will, but we want a good location and uh, they eventually said that we will allow the mosque to be moved up to 111th Avenue and 102nd Street. The mosque would stay from 1946 until about 1978, 79, and then the uh, Muslim community which had about 16,000 people at that time in the city of Edmonton because the population grew uh, because not only were the Arab Muslims coming into the Edmonton area, but the non-Arab Muslims were coming in. People from Pakistan, India, China, and so on were all coming in and that's how your Muslim population started to grow. The Muslim community uh, said, well, this mosque is too small for us. So we have to build something new, which will uh, house or take care of all of these uh, new Muslims that are here, as well as the older Muslims. When they built the new mosque, and the old mosque was not being used, then it became, it was an abandoned building, and the community couldn't afford to maintain both. So we were, it was a dilemma for the community and for the city too, because it would cost them money to maintain it. So they were, it slowly deteriorated. The Royal Alexandra Hospital was going to be expanding, and specifically they were gonna need the space the mosque was situated on to expand a parking lot. Helen Paul was a city councillor at the time and uh, a member of the Jewish community and she was one of our biggest allies in saving the mosque and she said to us when we were young and we would have out-of-town company come my dad would always include a drive past the little mosque when he'd be taking visitors around and she said we cannot let this mosque fall into ruin or be discarded. The Muslim women group that we have there, all the granddaughters were now part of the women's group. And they say, oh no, no, we, 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 this is our heritage. And this is our history. We were celebrating in 1988, the 50th anniversary of the mosque. And uh, there was a women's group known as the Canadian Council of Muslim Women, Edmonton Chapter, which was led by uh, people like Dr. Lila Fallman. And Dr. Fallman said, you know, instead of talking about destroying this mosque, knocking it down, why don't we talk about uh, saving it because it's the 50th anniversary? Wouldn't it be fitting since it really was women who spearheaded the building of the mosque, wouldn't it be fitting for women to be the ones who save it from destruction? So we set about to do just that. Number one, of course, there was no money to move the mosque if they were to move it. Number two, this was built 
completed in 1938. But the uh, rule was that the buildings before 1938 were heritage buildings, not those which were uh, built in 1938 or later. They were not heritage buildings. And the third problem was that uh, so get to, to get money to get this to find where it will go. There were many, many difficulties. And I, I believe that uh, if I knew how much work it was going to be, I mean, I, 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 uh, it would have been a bit more daunting at the beginning. For the next several years, we worked with city councillors, we worked with the mayor, we worked eventually with Fort Edmonton to move it down to our Living History Museum. We did a lot of fundraising, a lot of educating, a lot of lobbying, and uh, in the end, we were successful. The night they moved the mosque, Evelyn and a few others got in their cars in the middle of the night because it had to be moved in the middle of the night, and they followed the mosque from 111th to Fort Edmonton. One uh, starry night, it had to be traveled because they didn't want any traffic to be there. So they, they had to take off the roof first, all the bricks and everything. So it, had, it was in a rough shape. And they said it was the most moving experience of their life, just watching it being placed where it would always be. It took a long time to restore it because again, funds were not available. So little by little, they restored it and it's beautiful. It's a testament to the strength of the people who built it during a really hard time, and depression, and they had nothing. Newcomers to a country, and they wanted something that reflected their beliefs. And with all of the difficult conditions and all the adversity, they still built it. As small as the community was, it was a small community, they contributed, and they loved this country. This mosque represents a welcoming, community of Edmonton and an integrated community of Edmonton with uh, the Muslim community as well. We would not have the religion growing as much as it did if it wasn't for these original pioneers who helped to make life better for us. If it wasn't for them, we would not have a lot of the mosques that were built across Canada because of this mosque, the El Rashid Mosque. It was important to keep the mosque because it is a piece of our history. And it was a place where people came together from all religions, for many reasons, not just for prayer. And so it symbolizes that sense of expanded community, that sense of acceptance, of integration, as well as a place of faith and devotion to the divine.